Hi, and welcome to the introduction to physiologic birth. My name is Dr. Kenneth James, and with me are certified nurse midwives, Lisa Sherwood, Bree Davis, and Cam Tuttle. We are members of the Orange Coast Women's Medical Group, an affiliate of Hogue Hospital and the Fudge Family Birth Center at Hogue Irvine. Tonight, we're gonna to tell you the what, where, why, and how to achieve that physiologic birth that you desire. Physiologic, that means spontaneous, natural, unmedicated, you know, traditional birth, unlike modern birth, which is the induction, the pitocin, the epidural, you know, what all your friends get. A quick history lesson. Before 1920, every baby was born by a midwife at home. In 1920, they opened up hospitals all around the country where women went to give birth with medication, by a doctor, and had a medical birth. This did not change until the 70s when women asked for their midwives. They asked for Lamaze, and, or actually Lamaze, and Dr. Bradley started doing natural physiologic birth and brought that back into, into the mainstream. Um, let me tell you about my evolution into physiologic birth. I moved to California to start my own solo practice. As part of uh, my obligation at South Coast Medical Center, which is in Laguna Beach, I was asked to oversee a group of midwives. Reluctantly, because I never did it before, but curiously, I said yes. And quickly, I became enamored by their compassion, their skills, and the amazing uh, patient satisfaction that they both received. I was so impressed that I started modeling my, uh, m uh, the way I practice medicine after them. Tell me that's not the highest compliment. Within a year, unfortunately, the hospital closed the maternity ward and the midwives were gone. Immediately, I adopted all their patients and I became what my wife likes to call me, a midwife in pants. No offense to uh, the great profession of midwifery, right? Um, as my practice grew, I tried to find a like-minded partner, so I hired a midwife. And now at the Orange Coast Women's Medical Group, we have five full-time certified nurse midwives who are compassionate, skilled, um, and just truly amazing at what they do. We are delivering at the Fudge Family Birth Center, which is at Hogue, Irvine, which has all the bells and whistles you could ever want, need, or even if you don't want, we still have them available. Let me tell you, you are gonna be the true envy of all your friends. Now let's talk about why we're doing this in the first place. Um, well, tonight's objective again are to talk about physiologic birth, define what a midwife, a doula, and a physician are and how they're different, and then the benefits of why and then how you actually achieve um, your physiologic birth. So uh, in 1996, the WHO, the World Health Organization, came out and said, hey, we need to stop all this unnecessary intervention in childbirth. Childbirth should just be the natural process of labor. It's gonna lower costs, it's gonna have better outcomes, and it's gonna have women are gonna have better experiences. So what does natural physiologic birth do? It empowers the innate human ability of a woman and a fetus. And it's safe, and it's healthy, and it's natural, and it's beautiful, and it's really what labor is supposed to be all about. So the three aspects of physiologic birth are labor and delivery, the, what we call the golden minute, and then the golden hour. So the labor and delivery is self-explanatory. The golden minute or the newborn transition is the baby putting on your chest and allowing it to transition that first minute of life. And then the golden hour, as we know, is the immediate bonding of mommy and baby just to make a, uh, a, a more special natural physiologic transfer from in utero to real, real life. Why do we pursue it? Because women emerge from this natural childbirth feeling physically and emotionally powerful the most unbelievable feeling you could have. So, again, the process are one, spontaneous birth, not induction, not pitocin, spontaneous progression of birth, uh, biological and physiologic uh, aspects of vaginal delivery and delivery of the placenta naturally. The, it gives you physiologic blood loss. It gives you immediate skin to skin with the mom for the physiologic transfer. And then, of course, it really aids in early breastfeeding which is again, another goal of our physiologic process. 
What are we trying to avoid? Everything that you hear about, everything that you Google, and everything that your friends say they went through. It's augmenting your labor. It's unsupportive environment. That's the beauty of the midwife, is that they are with women. They are supporting you from the start to the finish. It's something that you just can't find. Uh, time constraints. You don't need to be delivered two hours after you show up at the hospital. You know, what about food and labor? Yes, you can eat and you can drink. We try to avoid, uh, you know, um, drugs and, and, and anesthesia only because that's not really what you wanted. Not because it's bad, but it's because you didn't want it. Of course, we avoid episiotomies. We're trying to not do uh, forceps. Um, and all the things that you want are what we give naturally because that is what natural labor is. That is what labor is. Forget natural. That's what labor is. So again, a quick thing of what's the benefits to society, it's actually cheaper and healthier. You get healthier moms and babies if you do it. That's the benefit to society. The benefit to you are everything. You have a quicker recovery, um, easier breastfeeding, more empowered feeling. And let me tell you, this is what I tell everybody. Pregnancy is easy, delivery is easy, the baby's the hard part. Well, when you do this and you feel empowered and you feel like you've just accomplished something incredible, you are going to make your postpartum so much easier. And then the benefits of the baby, of course, there's nothing better than putting the baby right on your chest and have that baby bonding and have that uh, breastfeeding start immediately. I mean, these are all things that have been done for, you know, thousands of years. Why can't we do it today? And the reason is because some people don't get, uh, have that opportunity because they're not offered it. Well, guess what? We offer it every day with our amazing midwives. So now let me introduce the stars of the show. It's not me, it's the midwives that we talked about earlier. So we're gonna first call up Lisa Sherwood. Hi there, thanks for joining us today, this evening. My name is Lisa Sherwood and I am one of those midwives who had the privilege of working with Dr. James a few years ago. Um, he was great and he really did believe in what we were trying to practice at South Coast Medical Center and unfortunately the hospital um, closed its doors soon after Dr. James joined our practice and was supporting us and so some of us went on to different places. I ended up going to Phoenix, Arizona for six and a half years where I continued my midwifery career. It was really important to me that all women of all walks of life could receive midwifery care. Um, stuff, some of the things that Dr. James alluded to, the type of care, but I think that the hallmark of midwifery care is really the relationship that midwives develop with their, with their patients or clients, the women that they serve throughout their lifetime from adolescence through menopause, but our, our real um, special area is that of supporting women through pregnancy and childbirth and the um, changes that their body goes through through that season of life and through the postpartum period. And so I've been tasked a little bit with uh, describing the differences between what's a physician or an obstetrician in relationship to care of women, what's a nurse midwife in relationship to that, and what is the role of a doula. And I like to think that we practice together and create a team for you that creates a seamless approach to your care during your pregnancy and your birth experience. Because we know that women really do care about how they were cared for during pregnancy, how they emerge from their birth feeling, what Dr. James described as empowered, but feeling very positive and feel like they had control over what was happening to their body, that they participated in that process, and that the baby was born, came directly on their chest, and that they were now a mother and baby unit outside of the womb. And I think midwifery care really does address that well in that the word midwife means with woman. And I feel like the way we are with women is we develop a trusting relationship with those women. And I think that the relationship is the hallmark of what I think midwifery care is truly about. Having been a nurse midwife for 21 years now, um, I think I've evolved and changed from the labor nurse I was to the early midwife I was and to the later life midwife that I am. And um, it's evolved over time, mostly from what I've learned from the other women, from the women that I've served and walked 
um, easy paths with and tougher paths with and very difficult paths with, but seen them emerge and grow through their um, pregnancy and childbirth experience. So that's what a midwife does is come alongside women and their extended support team to make good choices throughout pregnancy. And we know that if we help keep a woman healthy and involved in that with exercise, nutrition, and a positive mindset that a lot of labor and birth happens up here. Your body really knows what to do. And I think what I learned best was from a woman in the middle of labor and it was her third baby and I hadn't taken care of her in the first two births. And so it was very interesting. She was like fighting her labor and her birth and we were in the bathroom and she just looked at me and said, what do you want me to do? Get out of my baby's way? And I said, yes, exactly. Get out of your baby's way and just let your baby come naturally. And I tell people, you're really women, that you're the vessel that the baby's passing through. And if you allow that to happen, amazing things happen. And 20 minutes later, she was holding her baby. And so once I learned that from her and saw that, I use that every day now to get out of your baby's way and let your baby be born. And so midwives come along women to help support them throughout the pregnancy and are there much more continuously in labor versus episodically to help provide that support and encouragement to help you change positions, um, listen to your body that's telling you to sit on the toilet, for example, or to get into warm water and use water immersion to help you um, cope with the labor. And I think that some people are, think that it's either nothing or a continuous epidural that are the tools you have to work with your labor, and that couldn't be further from the truth because there's a wide chasm of, of uh, modalities and opportunities to work with your body, be it with massage, aromatherapy, supportive um, communication from your care provider, your partner loving you and being with you and supporting you, that replace an epidural, but replace it on steroids, in my opinion. Um, we use doula support as well. Doulas are trained to help take care of women and serve women in service is what the word doula means. And so they're there to provide physical comfort, emotional support, assisting with position changes and things like that, but they're not responsible for the well-being of your baby, your health and well-being, providing the direct physical care and um, assisting in birthing your baby and making sure that you bleeding is well controlled afterward, that you are being well taken care of, and that if there's any repairs that need to be done or stitches from the birth canal um, being injured at all, that we're able to do that. Doulas provide the support to women and midwives provide the direct medical and, well, physical care and midwifery care to the woman. Physicians are very important in our uh, team. We are fortunate at Orange Coast Women's Medical Group to, I keep forgetting when I'm counting them how many we actually have, but we have about 18 of them, I think, somewhere around there, um, that support us, and they are supportive of the midwifery care we provide. So I think that the women we serve are in a unique position that they get cared for by midwives, but they have the backup of board certified OBGYN physicians should we need help if they need a higher level of care, if baby or mom are doing something where they would need surgical intervention or something done differently, that we have that support and we have it right there and readily available in the Fudge uh, family birthing suites. So that's kind of the difference between the three. Um, it very much is a privilege. I've been with the Orange Coast Women's Medical Group for six years now and seen um, our midwifery program evolve from uh, baby steps of just getting into the hospital setting and being able to care for women to now being able to offer comprehensive care in a beautiful setting that offers women all the accoutrements and things that they might desire like our birthing tubs, our laboring tubs, and um, our queen size beds. We have nitrous oxide that's going to be a, a tool that women may be able or choose to avail themselves of, and a variety of other things. So that's the basic difference between the three um, people we were talking about. And um, it's been a privilege to be here. And now I give you Bree Davis, who's going to come and talk to you a little bit more. Thank you. Okay. 
I'm Bree Davis. I'm one of the midwives at Orange Coast Women's Medical Group. I actually was a labor and delivery nurse at Hogue for about six years, and then I became a midwife, and I was elsewhere, and now I am just elated that we were able to offer these awesome midwifery services at the new Fudge Family Suites and to have um, be back in the Hogue family. So I'm going to kind of talk about how we achieve a physiologic birth, that awesome, unmedicated, beautifully natural birth that we've been referencing. So. In your prenatal care with us, one of the huge aspects that we stress and what is really important in achieving this physiologic birth is truly taking care of yourself and having a healthy pregnancy, healthy mom, healthy baby. Um, ways that you achieve that, making sure you maintain a good exercise and nutrition pattern, um, appropriate weight gain during pregnancy, um, eating well, nourishing yourself, your body, and your baby. Um, emotional wellness, that's part of the midwifery care model is we get to know you. It's about the relationship. We get, like to get to know all of our patients at a personal level, not just medically, um, what your medical background is. We want to know your physical, spiritual, emotional background, your um, just overall mental health. And if you have any mental health barriers during your pregnancy, childbirth can be largely mental. And so it's important to address those early, um, start therapy if needed, and just get appropriate resources during pregnancy. We really stress childbirth education. So one of the requirements for the midwife suites at the um, Fudge Family Birthing Suites that we ask for our patients that want the midwife rooms with the queen size beds and tubs and an unmedicated birth, we do require some form of childbirth education. And we really stress the importance of making that a childbirth education course that is really geared towards unmedicated childbirth because preparation is key. Um, going into labor without any childbirth education is like going to a marathon without ever having ran before. Um, we really stress hiring a doula as well. Um, as Lisa referenced, doulas are a huge factor in your birth um, team and are just amazing. That's their specialty is helping women um, stay in their zone, use all those um, resources that they've learned throughout their childbirth education, encouraging the women and just offering continuous labor support. As midwives, we are in the hospital or the birthing suite area 100% of the time normally that you are there as well, but we can't always guarantee we don't have more than one woman in labor. And so the doula is awesome because they are 100% there to help you stay in your zone. Um, and then we also really encourage developing a birth plan. We know that birth plans don't always go according to plan. They're kind of more birth preferences. But the really big value of a birth plan is that it helps you think about the different aspects that could occur, different um, you know, situations that could occur throughout your labor and birth. And they, they empower you as the mother to be educated on those different aspects and to really think that in a, you know, if everything is going smoothly, what would I really like to achieve and what would I like to see happen in my birth and um, postpartum journey. And then we really uh, stress the importance of a trusting relationship with your provider. As our midwife team at Orange Coast Women's, we have all of our patients, clients, meet all of us throughout their prenatal care because we think it's really important that you know the person that's going to be there and with you and helping you catch and birth your baby. So in that, um, a way that we really try to help establish uh, a really trusting relationship between us is we like to really have a comfortable environment for you to come for your prenatal care. So these are two of our offices, one of them in Mission Bio and one of them in Irvine. Um, but these are what we try to model our midwife offices after. So they're just comfortable spaces for you to sit down on a couch rather than a plastic, you know, medical exam table with the paper and everything else. Just a comfortable space to, for us to talk, get to know each other, listen to your baby. Um, most all exams throughout your pregnancy can be done in this room. Of course, if a physical exam is required, we do have medical exam rooms available as well. But this is where we really establish that relationship. And then ways to prepare for a physiologic birth and how to promote a physiologic birth in early labor is we really encourage you to do early labor at home. Um, it's really, you know, the most comfortable space for you and it's just really beneficial to ride to the hospital birthing suites and active labor. If you're able to get the early labor at home when you have the comfort of your own space, it's just really beneficial to show up when your labor is super well established. It helps prevent any stalling or any unnecessary medical in uh, interventions. Um, we really value in a supportive environment, which is why we're so excited about these suites at Hogue Irvine, is that they are truly amazing, state of the art, but we really encourage 
dim lighting, uh, aromatherapy, music of your choice, um, any massage, freedom of movement throughout labor. Uh, it's really important to us that you're able to move and all low-risk women should be able to be very mobile in labor, um, have access to shower or tub use and have continuous labor support from midwife or doula. Um, and then medical interventions, we are grateful that medical in interventions exist. We know that sometimes they are needed, um, but we try to only use them as needed. And so we really try to minimize the risk of even IV therapy, fetal monitoring, vaginal exams, Pitocin augmentation, or breaking your bag of water. We're truly there to observe physiologic birth, and in physiologic birth, medical intervention should not be necessary. Um, so we you know, use as needed to make sure that you and your baby are safe and healthy, but otherwise we are really there to just observe your body doing what it's fully capable of doing. So um, with that, I am going to introduce our uh, another midwife, Cambria Tuttle. She goes by Cam. Hi, I'm Cambria Tuttle. I go by Cam and I work alongside these lovely people joining me in this live stream to talk to you about physiologic birth. I'm gonna go ahead and start next here with the coping techniques and labor. I know there are lots of questions <laughs> about this particular subject and just emphasizing what both Bree and Lisa have mentioned, um, coping techniques and labor really, I feel with my experience, is a big mental game. Your body and trusting your body to get you through the process really can propel you forward in achieving the physiologic birth that you're desiring. So among those therapies that we have offered to you, we really encourage childbirth education. Um, like Bree mentioned, the marathon analogy, I think that's perfect. You can't just show up ready to take on that race without having any preparation behind you. It's really important that throughout the pregnancy, you're consistently following up with your doula, your childbirth educator, and of course your midwife, your provider, in knowing and understanding what to expect when that big day comes. Um, the other options we have are non-pharmacological pain relief techniques that a lot of us use. Hoge Irvine has given us such great amenities and among those is water immersion. We're capable of using tubs and showers to achieve this and with water immersion comes the buoyancy and natural pain relief. It's quite incredible. Along with that, we promote relaxation and we use massage, acupuncture, acupressure, you know, TENS machines, aromatherapy, and music. With all of those remedies combined, you could be su quite surprised at how much you can accomplish and how much you can work through that discomfort of the labor to get to that physiologic birth. Uh, medications that we also are able to provide you would be the nitrous oxide that Lisa mentioned will be coming and that is just a nice um, quick relief in the moment. I see it really used great in that transitional period of labor, um, just when you need a little bit to take the edge off before finishing you know, your labor and your birth. Um, we also do offer IV narcotics if we need be and of course as a Later treatment, we have epidurals. We support all women who want to achieve physiologic birth, and we also are very supportive of those who want to use, you know, epidural as their pain management. So preparing for the pushing and the postpartum period. So we are big advocates as midwives that you can push, and we will catch your baby in any position that you um, deem necessary. We are more than willing to catch your baby standing up, squatting, on the toilet, in the shower, wherever we feel that it is safe for you and baby um, to be to welcome baby into this world and achieve that physiologic birth. We do everything that we can to avoid episiotomy. Episiotomy and as a standard midwife and obstetrician, uh, recent studies do tell us that that should be only indicated if medically necessary. Episiotomies are no longer routinely performed um, for laboring women in, in childbirth. We also provide that immediate skin-to-skin -skin time with your baby, like Dr. Ken James mentioned, that golden hour that promotes bonding and the relationship and that initial latch for the baby is super, super important. We help stay. Um, a lot of the time, the midwives 
We are really dedicated to being there after the birth and making sure you accomplish that first latch and establish a natural breastfeeding pattern. We also do perform delayed cord clamping. We love waiting until the pulse has stopped seizing. We see that as a natural resuscitation method for your baby. And actually, from experience and studies alike, it shows that it provides that great oxygenation that baby just needs to get through those first really transitional moments of life. Um, we also provide physiologic birth of the placenta. A lot of the times when you go unmedicated, you feel that natural urge to birth your own placenta, and we are advocates for that. And again, the golden hour. You know, we delay physical examination of the newborn. You know, we get that quick APGAR scores. Those are sufficient to know that your newborn is safe and happy on your skin. So we don't try to disrupt that bonding period or interrupt that skin-to-skin -skin time. We also are more than willing to delay those newborn medications. And the team, the birth team, is all on board with that. So back to Hogue Hospital Irvine, the Fudge Family Birthing Suites. Like Bree, I was a labor and delivery nurse over in Newport. I do feel this is a big um, passion project of mine. I'm so happy that I got to continue my career in uh, being affiliated with Hogue. I feel blessed to be here and a part of this um, Orange Coast Women's Medical Group. But the amenities that we have to offer are are endless, really. So we offer a beautiful brand new state-of-the-art facility with home-like amenities. You walk in, it has this, I like to <laughs> relate it to a day spa feel. Um, everything is bright and white, so you're not having those darker colors, you know, that classic hospital feel. Instead, it just very welcoming when you walk in those doors. We offer queen-size beds in our midwife suites to give it more of that home feel. We provide aromatherapy to all the patients. Hogue has aligned with Campo. You get um, three essential oils when you walk in. You also get a postpartum essential oil for when you're going home. They've done a really good job of providing those amenities for us and for our patients. We offer the beautiful rain showers. Like I said, you know, water immersion and hydrotherapy are great pain relief mechanisms for physiologic birth. And then on top of that, we have strategically hired a team of nurses, a team of techs, team of doctors, teams of midwives that all want to support your unmedicated physiologic birth. You know, every part of the team is on board with being, you know, as we can, allowing your birth plan to be achieved. Um, we do intermittent auscultation as routine care. After we get that beautiful non-stress test, that 20 minutes, we are all on board of doing intermittent auscultation. It is safe in your pregnancy. It's safe for low-risk physiologic births. We provide the midwifery model of care. Like Lisa says, that establishing a trusting relationship is at the core. And again, access to the other pain management interventions are there if needed. You have 24 access to OBGYNs. We have 24-7 access to a neonatologist on the floor and a 24-7 access to an anesthesiologist for those, maybe those times where a low risk, moderate risk does excel to the high risk and we need care right away. That way you and your baby are safe. These are some great pictures of the facility. You can see our queen size bed there on the left hospital grade. Both you and your partner can sleep comfortably there after you give birth. The tubs right there in the middle, really good size birth in a box tubs, um, almost like a pool. The beautiful rain shower is on the right. And again, you get that rain shower and even the handheld shower too to just be able to be as mobile as you'd like and put the water exactly where you need it for your discomfort. All right. I think I about concluded the presentation portion of this live stream, so we'll go ahead and start off with questions. Thank you again. Um, thank you for everyone who wrote in questions. We really appreciate it. Uh, first question, if my midwife is unable to attend my birth for any reason, who will attend in her place? So um, we're lucky to have a team of five and we all live relatively closely. So we always have one midwife who's 24 seven dedicated to be on call for you, not in the office, not pulled in different directions, but 
there are some occasions where babies like to come at the same time and we usually are able to anticipate that and frantically text our friends, not really, but we do just text each other and usually someone's able to come in. Um, I don't think we've ever had a situation where someone couldn't come in, but God forbid someone couldn't. We do have 24 seven um, in-house OB hospitalist and OB Joanne. So we would have someone available to help take care of you if, if we were not. Um, but yeah, we are we're always able to get a midwife there. Um, and then uh, another question is, what is the requirements to achieve a physiologic birth if it's a VBAC? So a VBAC, if you're unfamiliar, is a vaginal birth after cesarean. Um, great question. Pretty much it's the same exact thing. It's just trusting your body. A lot of times another aspect that comes in with being someone who's trying to do a child labor after a cesarean birth is a lot of times the mental block of getting over your first birth. And so that goes back to just emotionally and mentally meeting yourself where you're at handling and working through any trauma that could have arisen from your first birth to get past that mental block in your ex birth. The other thing is just really truly taking care of yourself. So being really sure to, you know, eat right, exercise during your pregnancy, um, and just, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally take care of you. Other than that, it's the same thing. It's still, you know, still your body, still your uterus. Just trust yourself and your body's ability to to have a physiologic birth. But we have um, you know, people achieve VBACs unmedicated and have beautiful low intervention births all the time. And uh, it's always a really awesome uh, emotionally healing process, which is a really cool thing to, to witness. So thank you for those questions. We have more coming. When will the nitrous oxide be available for use? We did just get an update a few days ago, it should be available in February. We currently have the nitrous oxide actually available on the unit. We just, with us being a new facility, we want to, of course, incorporate these amenities to you safely. We have to appropriately train the staff that's involved in administering. Yes, it's a self-administration um, pain intervention, but we still have to have the staff appropriately trained and know what to expect when using this. So should be coming in February. And how long will my midwife support team stay with me after the birth? So with your midwife, your provider, we do, like I said, we try to stay after, you know, allow all those physiologic processes to occur, promote the skin to skin time, advocate for your birth plan, even in those precious moments after the birth. We like to stay and establish breastfeeding, get that going, but we do as a provider, we will leave. And again, that's why we encourage you to have doulas. A lot of the times the doulas will stay after the birth with you for a few hours. Again, just also advocating for you on that end, making sure that you are feeling like breastfeeding is going well. We also want to make sure your pain is going well. And then you will always see your midwife before you go home. We do roundings in the morning, at night, every day you're in the birthing center hospital and then we do incorporate a two-week postpartum visit and a six-week we find the two-week postpartum visit is really nice just to touch base with you emotionally um, those first two weeks can be really intense after having a baby and you know adjusting to motherhood so we like to just check in there give you the next steps of what to expect in the following weeks of your postpartum period and then we see you at six weeks and as far as continuous labor support, we do, like Bri had mentioned, we try to be continuous at the bedside part of that birth team with you, your doula, your partner, and, you, and we usually are able to accommodate this. Only rare circumstances would we have to maybe manage a couple patients at the same time. Lisa again. Um, I have a couple questions here. One says, under what circumstances would prenatal care need to be transferred to an obstetrician? And I think that that's a great question. We really try, even if you have some unique needs, like you have an elevation in your blood pressure or you have gestational um, pregnancy diabetes, things like that, we really try to do what we call um, co-management where we work with a physician closely to try to still provide midwifery care with a, a little additional support of 
our physicians. Sometimes that means alternating visits, physician and midwife. Um, sometimes it means that we're there as the secondary person and a physician manages your labor and birth. But we try very hard to maintain that continuity and to provide you with midwifery care even if a physician becomes involved. So I would say that the majority of the time if your intention is to receive midwifery care that you will receive midwifery care sometimes with the enhanced benefit of a physician working with us as well. We are part of a, a cohesive team. Another question, and this is a great question, and it's a tough question. Are masks required for the mother and father while in labor? Of course, we've been dealing with this pandem pandemic for a year now, and we never dreamed that we'd be doing this you know, into 2021 and what things would look like. And it's an ever-changing and evolving scenario that we deal with every day as healthcare providers and the couples that we work with and the women that we serve. And I think now with more and more people being able to receive the COVID vaccine, um, I think we're going to see some changes as 2021 evolves. Our intent is not to make it hard for you to breathe during labor and have to wear a mask, but the women are screened for COVID in a rapid screening when you arrive. And the midwives are very comfortable having the mask off around us and working with you and definitely don't want you to have to push wearing a mask but we also need to respect hospital staff and other people. And if they're uncomfortable with you having a mask off at all times, when they're in the room in close proximity to you, they may request that you wear a mask. But we do try to make it as easy as possible for you to not have to constantly wear a mask while you're trying to, to birth your baby. Thank you. Um, I have a couple administrative and interesting questions. So the first one is, um, if you are delivering with a physician, can you use the amenities like the queen bed and the labor tubs? Well, it's definitely an individual um, uh, process of labor. Um, like I told you before, uh, after the midwives have left South Coast and I kind of adopted all their patients, you know, I did allow my patients as much autonomy as possible. Um, we didn't have queen beds and things like that, but they still had that physiologic birthing experience uh, even in a regular room. Um, so we did reserve the uh, midwifery rooms for the uh, women who want physiologic birth, unmedicated, natural birth, etc., but with our midwife program. So one of the options would be to see a midwife and um, they will accommodate those. Can you have natural physiologic birth um, and use all the other amenities in a regular room? Absolutely, but definitely discuss that with your provider because it has to be a comfort level with everything. Um, if I want to give birth at the Fudge Family Birthing Suites, um, do I need to reserve a room? Um, and what if it's full? Well, there are only 12. The, the, the cool thing about the Fudge Birth Center is there are 12 beautiful rooms um, where, you, where you labor delivery, postpartum, and you stay until you go home. So there's no transferring to another floor or to a less comfortable room or less comfortable bed. Uh, with that being said, those rooms are occupied with you until you leave. So that does potentially cause an issue if somebody wants, if a new patient needs to come in and the rooms are getting kind of tight, especially leaving special rooms for the midwives. Uh, we haven't had that problem. We don't anticipate that problem. 12 rooms seem to be enough with all the research that we did. Um, every provider does have access to other hospitals if needed so if the birth center is filling up and it feels like it'll be a dangerous um, for you to be there if there's no rooms uh, there are other places to deliver but that's definitely something that will triage at birth a great question was the difference between physiologic and psychologic well physiologic is what your body does naturally you go into labor spontaneously. Your body does what it's supposed to do physiologically. It's all the parts of your body working together. Psychologically is the way that you cope with the labor that you're enduring. So psychologically, you do classes, you do uh, breathing, education, you have focus, you listen to music, you can scream and yell if you want, you can uh, do other things emotionally to get through it compared to physiologically is just what your body is doing by itself. 
So we use psychology to help us get through the physiology of birth. Hi. Another question I have is, can you still have a physiologic birth if you have to be induced because you're more at risk with gestational diabetes? That's a good question. Um, unmedicated birth, yes. Physiologic birth, not necessarily. Physiologic birth is uninterventive, just natural birth, meaning your body goes into labor spontaneously and progresses spontaneously without the use of Pitocin or breaking water, and you give birth spontaneously. The physiologic birth is just completely uninterrupted, uninterventive birth. Um, with an induction, usually that requires some form of intervention. With that being said, that doesn't mean you can't have an unmedicated, beautiful, awesome birth. And there are medical conditions sometimes that arise that indicate an induction. Um, and there are ways to be gentle with an induction and to encourage you to be able to still achieve a, a beautiful, unmedicated, um, spontaneous birth that you desire, but not necessarily in the category of physiologic birth, just because most all inductions require intervention, because that's kind of by definition what an induction is. Hope that answers that. Sorry, one more thing to add about the um, inductions with an unmedicated birth. Did want to point out that at Hogue Irvine, um, we do have wireless monitors. So with an induction, typically one of the aspects of that is anytime you're you know, using medication or anything, it is a requirement that your baby's continuously monitored. And in that case, we do have completely portable wireless waterproof monitors, so you're still able to be really mobile with your birth uh, and labor as well. So I just wanted to add that. Midwives support medicated births, yes, of course. Um, because we have specific training in supporting women in their physiologic process, unmedicated, does not mean that if in that instance or if maybe our plan isn't going directly, an induction, what have it, we are more than capable to support you if you get an epidural, IV narcotics, the nitrous oxide, all of that. We're happy to support you in whatever you need. Um, and medically trained to do so. I guess I get to answer all the COVID-related questions here. Um, are there limitations to birth plans due to COVID regulations in the hospital? Um, that's an interesting question and a great question, and I honestly don't think that um, birth plans have changed much. I've told people that birth hasn't changed, and, and I fully mean that in, in a variety of ways. I feel like that when we're out in the community where, um, where people may or may not wear a mask, where people may go out and be sick, where people are maybe not honest, you don't know what, who you're around and what's going on. But in the hospital setting, they're very strict. So when anybody comes to the hospital, I've had my temperature taken, I can't tell you how many times in the last year, but everybody's temperature's taken and, and have to answer a variety of questions to be allowed into the hospital. So we really do screen people well. That being said, we do not allow visitors. So some people are sad that their mom can't come to their um, birth. Some people are sad that they can't introduce their new baby to siblings right away in the hospital. But that is indeed to promote safety and to guard that birthing space for you, which is really what's important to us. The hospital deems that doulas are essential workers. So again, at Hogue Hospital Irvine in the Fudge Birthing Suites, your doula is welcome and not um, asked to leave, can stay there with you throughout your labor, birth, postpartum period, and help you adjust um, with your new baby. If your partner 
needs to leave. Sometimes they will let the partner leave one time to go home to do something, but we really discourage that. And usually if they have to leave again, they can't come back. So you need to have your one person there and stay with you. We also require that you stay in your room. You can't walk around the unit. And if you need nutrition, snacks, things like that, you can order and we'll bring food to you in your room from the cafeteria, or you can door dash you know, food to your door. The one place that you are allowed to go, and we didn't really address it, is the Sow family walking garden. We have a beautiful walking garden at Hogue Hospital Irvine just outside of our um, birthing unit. It's a lovely outdoor space where you can go and spend time outside in nature, walk, breathe fresh air, and one woman and one team at a time can be out there in the garden um, during labor. So I think that in some ways we've changed COVID has changed us, but COVID has not changed birth from the standpoint of what you're allowed to do and what your birth plan entails. Thank you. Oh, all right. Um, wow. How long can your water be broken before induction is needed? That's a great question as well. It's not as easy to answer because it's impacted by other situations. It depends on the how far into your pregnancy you are. Obviously, if your water bag broke early, we'd want to see you earlier and help come to a decision as to what we should do to get your baby born. And it depends on other things, such as what's the color of the amniotic fluid when it breaks. If it's clear fluid and we know your baby's healthy, it enables us to wait longer and bide time. If your baby, if your water breaks and there's meconium, which is a green tinge from baby stool, then it indicates that your baby could have had some stress and we would want to monitor your baby and maybe consider helping get your baby on the way to being born. But as we, um, as Bree intimated earlier about if you need to be induced, that there's gentler ways to induce you, we also believe that's true if somebody's water breaks. If you're um, a normal, healthy, pregnant person, and we do a test called the Group B strep culture at the end of pregnancy, that tests for a bacteria in the, in the vaginal area that has a potential risk to babies um, coming through the birth canal, after about 12 hours, um, we would want to help your baby be born. We would ask you to come in sooner than that to help assess that everything's okay and to start antibiotics that are recommended when the water's broken, and that's on an individual basis. If your water bag breaks and it's clear fluid and your strep culture was negative, we ask you to come in after about 12 hours to evaluate what's going on and then make a decision together based on what's going on with your contraction pattern, what you're doing if your cervix is starting to dilate on its own. So I really feel like that is an individual decision based on what the midwife and the laboring woman and her support team uh, come together and make a decision as to what's best for that individual situation. The next question is, what is the triage process at Hogue Irvine? And will mom be asked a lot of questions? And what if she's doing hypno and she doesn't want to answer the questions? Well, the triage process, first of all, the triage room is gorgeous. And it's accommodating. And it has everything that we need to make sure that mom and baby are healthy. Um, one of the biggest issues, yes, is when you are in the zone, it's really disruptive to be asked 105 questions about um, your medical history and your social history, but they are really important questions for your health and safety, um, especially if things don't progress physiologically. Um, our unit is brand new. Don't forget, we only opened up December 8th, so we are working on little logistics like um, having a uh, nurse navigator who can potentially uh, get these questions answered before that. It's definitely something that we're looking into, uh, but there is nothing set yet. But again, we've been open you know, a month and a half, so this is definitely a great question that we're going to um, push on to our administrators. So, but the uh, triage area is um, staffed and beautiful and comfortable and is a, is a great place to be seen. And um, really appreciate this question because we're going to move this up the chain. Another great question. How do you know when transition into active labor and you need to come into the suites? So that is a, a challenging thing, especially if it's your first baby. But 
again, childbirth education as well as your prenatal visits with us, we really kind of go over how to know when the appropriate time is. Um, but another huge fantastic aspect of having a doula is that they are able to come to your home and they have witnessed labor a bunch of times. So they're really an awesome resource at helping you know when to, to come into the suites. But if you are alone with you and your partner, um, typically it's it's something where your partner almost will notice before you sometimes because they'll just see something change in you. It's kind of transitions are really uh, cool process but it's kind of the entire body just takes over and you're just in the zone and your body's just kind of doing everything for you and um, you know the intensity and of your pressure waves just really pick up and everything just gets you know a bit more intense and usually you'll know um, or your partner will know or your doula will know it's something where it's hard to anticipate the exact moment but when you're in it um, there's usually no question you usually know so Great question. That's all the questions. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, it's awesome to hear from you all. Uh, we're really excited about our practice growing, about Hope Irvine, the new suites, and everything. It is definitely the place you want to be to have your baby. Um, any, if you would like to talk to us more about our midwifery services or becoming a patient, our website is www.ocwmg.com. There's a whole midwifery section there. Um, and then you can also call our office. The contact number is on the website as well. And um, you can also just come to see us to just discuss if you want to know more information, not necessarily sure if you'd like to see us for your care, but just want to hear more about our practice more than happy to um, talk to anybody and answer any and all questions. So thank you so much for being here. Come have your baby with us at Hogue Irvine. It's stunning. You will love it.